Next we're going to talk about wiring the control panel. The probes from the tower connect to the blue terminal points right here. And like I said earlier, each probe wire has a number on it from Marty, such as number 13 is a reference probe. So make sure that wire number 13 is wired to this terminal strip number 13. Probe wires all mount here. These gray contacts are your output contacts for your high alarm, low alarm, low cutoff, and high cutoffs. The red terminal points are actually powered with 120 volt AC. This is where you connect your field wiring from your makeup solenoid to here, and the panel will supply 120 volts to the makeup solenoid. Additional field wiring is your main power, which comes from the bottom, up and over, and into the top of your two pole main circuit breaker. Hot and neutral, and inside here there's a place to land a ground which is right here. Here again we need six amps of service to power this breaker and to power the controls that are inside. I just pointed out to you the major components inside the panel and how they're wired. Also on the inner door is a real nice wind diagram here again showing you what I just talked about. Here's your incoming power coming into the main breaker feeding your panel. Over here is the what we call the user terminal strip these points right here are the blue terminal strips for your probes. The probes are inside the cooling tower, wired back to here. Make sure you follow the wire numbers all the way back. And then the gray terminal points are these right here, which are your contacts on the individual relays. And this is where the customer would wire his building management system alarming and other control circuits to the gray terminal points. Now that the control panel is wired, we're gonna start up panel here um, I currently have my power coming into the top of my main breaker. So, like with any panel, you got to make sure you turn your power on. So with the handle down, power is off. So I'm going to turn the handle up. Now I've got power flowing through the circuits in the control panel. So during startup, make sure your main breaker is handles in the up position for power on. Also, if you have a makeup circuit in your panel, you also have to flip the handle on this smaller breaker now that panel has full power and there's 120 volts inside this panel so you got to be a little bit careful. When you're first doing a startup on a cooling tower typically there's no water in the basin. So if you have your solenoid installed into the water makeup piping and wired to this panel to add water into a dry basin you can simply rotate this to the hand position. By rotating that switch to the hand position I am actually bypassing the makeup card and directly energizing that makeup solenoid. So now water ought to be flowing into the cooling loop. Once the water level has reached to the top of the overfill pipe, you now have enough water in your cooling tower. You can rotate the knob to off and then over to auto. While you're in the auto position, now the hanging probes that are in the cooling tower basin are monitoring the water level. Anytime you want to turn this system off, which is basically the makeup system, not power to the panel, but the makeup system, just go ahead and rotate it back to the off position. But in auto, that's normal uh, mode of operation.